What's up, vinyl community? It's Jason coming at you with another video from the Jazz Basement. Hope you're doing well. Uh, it's been a while. Apologies for that. It's been a little bit crazy. But I did promise you if I got a thousand subscribers, I would show you some of the biggest scores. Um, mega grails, true bonafide grails uh, in the jazz collecting world um, that I picked up last year. So not all at once, uh, sort of spread out throughout the year. Uh, these are ones that I haven't shown you yet, but I'm really excited to. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first up, this is a um, pretty rare record. I looked on Discogs this morning, about 40 people have it. I'm sure there's more collectors that aren't on Discogs that have it, but it is Donald Bird, Bird Jazz. Um, this is on the transition label um, I believe this was released in 1955 um, as you can see it is an absolutely stunning copy um, the wax itself is incredibly clean it's probably on I mean I hate to use it but I would say near mint near mint minus I mean there's no marks on it it looks brand new um, it's a lighter weight vinyl which is a uh, lighter weight vinyl relative to say um, one of the blue notes from the similar era, so Lexington Avenue. Um, the actual music itself is is pretty excellent. Um, definitely more of that kind of old timey jazz feel, um, you know, early early hard bop, let's call it. Um, but really great album features Yusef Latif. This was mostly recorded live, so you kind of get that really cool live vibe. You can hear you know glasses chinking and and people talking and and things like that, but uh, I believe this was recorded in Detroit. Um, really good. Is it my favorite album? No, but um, you know, had an opportunity to pick this up. I uh, did not pick this up locally. Um, uh, it was it was a, a, a private sale uh, from someone on the West Coast. But really clean, really hard to get. Um, does not have the booklet for you completists. Um, next up, another private sale um, from my buddy Spencer. Um, He's kind of gone a different direction in his collecting, moving away from hard bop more into kind of that 70s realm, uh, which is great. And um, he watches, I think he watches these videos. So thank you, Spencer. But um, he came out, offered this to me, said, hey, this is something, you know, I think you'd really like it. It's right in your wheelhouse. What do you think? We worked out a deal and this is now mine. J.R. Monterose. Um, so Blue Note 1536. Beautiful, beautiful copy um, on the Lexington Avenue labels, Deep Groove, all of that. So, J.R. Montrose, Ira, uh, Ira Sullivan, Horace Silver, Wilbur Ware, Billy Joe Jones. Um, this is, a you know, again, not, not the most amazing session out there. Um, pretty tough to get. Um, curiously, after I bought this about a month later, I did see one locally that was even cleaner than this. Um, but this is clean enough. It's a really good session. It's not an amazing session, but it's really good. Does it deserve to be a tone poet? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, again, this is another one that that's pretty rare. So, um, beautiful, beautiful. Um, yeah, really nice. Okay. Next couple are really just amazing copies. So, um, Next one was another private sale. Um, really looking for this. I really got into Horace Parlin over the summer. Um, I didn't have any of, the, any of his work at the beginning of the year. And what turned me on was actually um, a Stanley Turrentine album called Lookout, um, which I think is actually coming out as a tone poet or classic series or something. There's some reissue of it. That's a pretty hard one to find. But his rhythm section... Um, was featured on that album. I was like, wow, these guys really have it together and, and, and want to explore some more. Um, so I've been looking for some Horace Parlin. I did get up and down earlier this year, um, but then I added this to the stable, uh, which is Horace Parlin, Us Three. Uh, beautiful cover. Um, you know, what else can be said? I mean, this is about as, as minty as you can get. It is a review copy so it is a promo um which is great is it my favorite horace parlin album 
It is not. But is there a bad Horace Parlin album? No, there is not. Super clean. Um, I would say EX all around. Lovely, lovely copy. Really excited for that. Um, next up, let's see. I got three more to show you. Um, huge, huge finds. Uh, so next up is my favorite trumpeter, Lee Morgan. Um, Lee Morgan's 1500 series stuff is, is tough to find. Um, if you're lucky, you can find one of the United Artists reissues. Those came out in 1972. They're cut in mono, which is, which is great. Um, this one is, is pretty special. So um, I actually had a second press of this that I got at HR. It was sort of a VG copy, um, played with a bit of surface noise. Um, and then had an opportunity to upgrade to a, a first, um, through a local seller, not a shop, but a local seller and jumped on it. Lee Morgan volume three, uh, really, really nice cover here. Um, in great shape. Lovely. Um, so you have Lee Morgan on trumpet, Gigi Grice, alto sax, Benny Golson, tenor sax, Witten Kelly, piano, Paul Chambers on bass. Charlie Persip on drums. Um, and all of these are done by Benny Golson, all the compositions here. Benny Golson's an amazing player, even more so as a composer. Um, Hassan's Dream, amazing. I remember Clifford, obviously a, an ode to um, uh, Clifford Brown. So really nice. Um, and then on the back it says, to the drummer man, Tommy Grice. So um, uh, Gigi Grice had a brother, Tommy Grice. Uh, I don't know the, the, the provenance of that, if this was Tommy Grice's copy. I don't know. I'm not big into, big into that. I don't care if it's autographed or anything like that. But in terms of the actual record itself, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, you know, kind of VG+. Plus. Nothing, nothing too crazy, but you can see. Let me see a little bit, maybe. Um, but the New York 23. New York 23 label, which is great. Uh, this plays beautifully. Um, I would say sort of plays, you know, strong VG, um, weak VG plus, however you want to look at it. Um, I actually have a dedicated mono cart, uh, mono cartridge. So uh, it's actually on the table now. It's a pretty cheap cartridge. It's a Audio Technica AT33 mono. Uh, so it has a, a conical tip, um, which tracks really well. Um, and then also you get that beautiful mono experience, which is a little bit different than listening in stereo. The big advantage in my view is that um, it, if there's surface noise, it picks up less because it's it's only picking up the mono groove, um, the stereo grooves are in, in the wall, so it doesn't pick that up. Um, and it just basically focuses all of the surface noise in the center of the picture. Um, so I would say, you know, you could take a record that was just not where you want it to be in terms of sound quality on a stereo cartridge. And, and, and I play it on this, which is just a basic, you know, conical. I mean, it's not an it's a conical tip, um, which is at the time what they used um, to play records. But then I get probably, I would say 30 to 40%, in some cases, 50% reduction in surface noise. Um, I think partly because the needle doesn't pick it up as much. Um, but then also it gets centered in the, the in the music. It's hard to explain. Um, if I play it with a stereo cart, it's more prominent. You kind of hear it more in the edges of the of the sound stage. But with mono, everything comes to the center. Um, it's still there. I mean, the record's still the record, but um, you just hear it less. So that if you if you have a lot of mono records, um, you know, some people like to use a mono switch uh, on on their on their preamp. But um, anyway. Something to think about. Um, I think it's worth it. Again, my car this cartridge was $300 um, just as a tester, and, and you can spend thousands of dollars if you want. But uh, highly recommended. Okay, getting to the, the, the heavy, heavy, heavy part of the programming. Um, this next one is amazing. Um, the artist didn't put out a lot. Um, this is one I actually, I got this one at HR Records, actually. They had a, a pretty killer collection come in back in June. Um, picked up a couple, like, 
don't think I've, I've showed those yet, but that was the, um, in that hall was the Quiet Kenny, which I did, which I did share. Um, but this one is a burner of a session. Absolute fire. Um, really, really excited to have this. Uh, this might be my favorite pickup of the year. And, and I mean, 2022 was, was insane. Johnny Griffin, uh, volume two, uh, a blow in session. So beautiful, beautiful artwork. Um, look at this lineup. Johnny Griffin, Hank Mobley, John Coltrane, all tenor saxes. Throw in a little Lee Morgan on trumpet, Winton Kelly on piano, Paul Chambers on bass, and Art Blakey on drums. This is a smoke, smoker of a session. Unbelievable. This needs to be a tone poet. Unbelievable session. Um, it's just super high tempo. They're going after it. Man, um, Blue Note, 1559. Pretty crazy. Um, this was actually, I think, my first, um, first album where it's New York 23 on the labels. Both sides. Um, and you can see this wax is super clean. Um, and the playback's even better. So beautiful. 47 West 63rd, New York 23 on both sides. Whew. Incredible. Um, I spin this one a ton. And then last but not least, amazing pickup. Um, needs no introduction. Original monopress of Cool Strutton. Blue Note. 1588, Sonny Clark on the keys, Art Farmer, Jackie McLean, Paul Chambers, Billy Joe Jones, beautifully clean. Um, fun fact of history, this was the first album where they started to print uh, on the spine, for Blue Note at least, so I don't know if you can see that, but Sonny Clark, cool strutton. First time in Blue Note history that they did that, uh, at least that's my understanding. And then the wax... Pretty, pretty clean. Um, BG Plus, I would say, you know, plays beautifully. Let's see if we can. Oh, yeah. Deep Groove, 47 West 63rd, no registered trademark. Um, you know, nothing needs to be said about this album. This is, you know, I don't know, top five, top ten jazz albums ever musically. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's, that's. Being aggressive um it's a great session uh, i guess it depends on it depends on your case this is a great session this should be in your in, uh in your your um in your collection they did a classic series of this so it's widely available uh, or it should be and and affordable a lot more affordable than this original copy but um yeah that'll do it so so thank you sorry it took so long um amazing amazing stuff and um you know, Jazz Basement has, has, I didn't buy a ton, to be honest, over the past couple of months, but we've had a strong start to 2023. So next video, I'm going to show you some of the things I picked up so far this year in 2023. You're not going to want to miss that. Some super clean uh, burner sessions coming up. So thanks for your time. Thanks for your patience. And until next time, have a good one.